Hi, this is Lee Petty, project lead of Headlander. Now, Headlander was a game inspired by 70s science fiction, so I'm really excited that the game's soundtrack is finally coming out on a double vinyl album. And our composer, David Earl, composed a lot of the music using analog synthesizers from the time. And they have this great, imperfect, rich sound. And I want you to take a look at this clip we have here where David Earl is composing live using some of those fabulous old synthesizers. I want to get some interesting tones out of the monotron. And I was thinking of creating some tones that are like... You know, like little things that sound like a pretty glitchy environment. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Basically, I can tell you the concept behind the area that this is in. Essentially, the hero has, is, is reaching the end game. Everything's super psychedelic and weird and messed up and broken and trying to create the sound of a computer that's going insane. But like not just a computer, but like an entire environment that's going insane. And I'm, and I'm kind of calling back to the weirder electronic music guys like Zanakis and Stockhausen and that kind of thing. There's a common tone, yeah, that, that high tone that we were hearing. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm kind of going to base this whole piece around, is that. Now I'm going to go to the SH-101 and see if I'm, I'm thinking about some kind of a low, like kind of a low synth that comes in every once in a while. So you can hear I'm tuning the resonance of the filter. Yeah, there we go. One of the things I really love about writing this way is that you, like I did that initial thing, and now when I'm playing against it, it's like in real time, I'm, I'm trying to have a conversation with the sound I just played, you know, and like, and even though those sounds that I was making initially are just kind of like, they sound random. It's like, eek, eek, rick, rick, rick. But when you start putting a bass to it, all of a sudden everything gets contextual. You begin to hear the deliberateness of, of the piece. And what's tricky for me is to try and not make it too, like, composerly. You know, I'm trying to still keep elements of, uh, of the weird. One thing I, I really like to do is to fill up the sequencer with some kind of a pattern. It's hard to make an arpeggiator sound menacing. Actually, you know, it might not be bad to have something beautiful. So I'm going to duplicate that track, and I'm going to try to just add in that little bit every here and there. The feeling that I'm getting from is you're, you're given this vastness and you're given this sort of sense of wonder. I feel that that was like the sense of wonder part of the equation. Mm -hmm. You know, we've got the, the creepy futzed out thing. We've got the gravitas of the bass and then we have this other little piece. And now is where I have to be super, super careful <laughs> because the more I add now could detract from the overall piece. So, um, and it's beautiful to hear music that's not cut up into, you know, it's not quite as sequenced. I need to be able to break it up, you know. Yeah. 
Yeah, so every once in a while, a little melody element. So that's a randomized wave being used on the LFO. A classic 70s computer sound. It's also calling back to an old Vangelis piece that I really like. So that's how I'm going to end it.